and versus chainsaw. It looks painful. Our hospitals are taking care of more patients than ever. You're right. <laughs> With medical teams under constant pressure. Can Dr. Pixie come to resource, please? Somebody as poorly as this little one, we really need to treat them quickly. To meet our expectations. I'm just worried about what it's going to be like afterwards. But there's a crucial member of the team we sometimes forget. I've never ever been on a bed like this. The hospital bed. Another ward, another storage, another bed. Yeah. In our lifetime, we are likely to need one of them at least three times. I've probably spent a quarter of my life on a hospital bed. <laughs> in this series, our cameras have been given unprecedented access to beds in four very different hospitals across the country. It's life, life and death, and everything that goes in between. We'll see the world through the bed's eyes. Hello, my love. Hiya. As they share the most challenging... I don't know what to do. I don't know. ..most intimate... Okay. Yeah. ..and most rewarding... Happy birthday! <laughs> ..moments of our lives. Thank you for being here. Have you been anywhere else? And a hospital cannot function without beds. Beds are vital. This is The Secret Life of the Hospital Bed. The population of Newcastle is fast approaching 300,000 people. When faced with a medical emergency, residents here head to the Royal Victoria Infirmary. The A&E department has 29 extremely busy beds. Obviously, we are constantly moving patients from bed to bed and, 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 and onto different areas, depending on what they need. What have you done to your arm? Cut the wheel of the turns off. A&E beds travel the length and breadth of the hospital, taking patients for x-rays, scans and to other wards. Our hospital beds, they're like, uh, they're like little superstars. They are part of the team. I think the unsung heroes. A and E Bed Nine is used to supporting patients in pain. Ooh. Andy is 47 years old. He's injured his hip while kayaking. Just take your time. Ah, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I've got it. He's worried he's broken his hip bone. Hmm. Can you straighten your legs out or not? An earlier examination ruled out a hernia, but he's still in intense pain. And he was driven to A&E by his wife, Alison. That's got worse. It just got worse. I didn't think, I didn't think, I didn't, didn't think it was that bad. But now I've had to move. OK. The couple have been married for 12 years. Something. I've ripped mm. something. Oh, do you know what? I didn't think it was that bad. I really didn't think it you was that bad. You must have done something. something. Something's not right. It must just be so certain just... movements. Earlier today, Andy was kayaking with friends on the River Tees. Went into a wave, spun, turned round, let the wave drag me in backwards. This time, as the boat kind of like caught me, it just went so quickly, and I just gripped myself, and then um, it just. Um, and just as I did that, before I went upside down, I was just, oh my God, it just literally just, there was a searing pain in here. Paddled to the side and then I just called like one of the guys over, I can just kind of like, I need, I need to get out the boat, I need to get out the boat. I kind of like just got myself out, but I was just hobbling around on the side. This isn't Andy's first visit to hospital. But I've been in 20 times, yeah. I cut my finger, oh, that was years ago. Cut my finger through there, that scar there. The, the carving knife, trying to cut the hedge when I was in the 20s, yeah, because I didn't have any money to afford any um, pop clippers. I got another time when I was about 16, I was racing along with my mate, yeah, just as kids racing along on our bikes. And I said, well, why don't we do it, have a race? So we're doing that, going so quickly, I stopped pedalling, and I foot slipped when I went over the handlebars. And it has been with A&E Bed 9 for 20 minutes. Oh, just not an injection. I don't 
like injections, but at this particular point in time, if it's a morphine injection, just bring it on. Yeah, it's rubbish for needles. <sighs> it's just about to have me sandwich as well, it's put me off. <laughs> just seeing him in pain. You know, I'm actually not too bad with pain, but that was pain. It was, it's just the moving, isn't it? So obviously something's not right. Nurse Boyd comes to administer some pain relief. Hello. Hello. What's your name, sir? Andrew Taylor. Got some more painkillers for you. Not allergic to Oh, is that oral? Is it an oral one? No needles. Not from me. No. I wouldn't be that cruel to you. You just yeah. drink that one down. Oh, right, OK. All right. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. Not too bad? No. It's got an essence of strawberry. Some people hate it. Oh, that much. Oh, yeah. We'll see you for the next bit. A&E Bed 9 takes Andy to X-ray. If anything is broken, it will mean no sport for Andy for a long time. <laughs> Queen's Hospital in Romford, Essex. Good morning, The maternity ward has 25 beds, all of them specifically designed to offer comfort and support to the 9,000 women who give birth here each year. There we go. <laughs> Maternity bed seven is joined by 29-year-old Lauren, her mum Jacqueline and husband Robert. Then we're getting another contraction. Oh, wow. Lauren's been in labour for four hours. <sighs> My waters haven't broken yet, but they're still intact, yeah, OK. Midwife Campatillo is on shift. I think Lauren's doing OK. She's a bit in pain. <laughs> She's lacking the gas in there. Robert and Lauren have been together since they were 17. They have one son, Harley. She can squeeze pretty tight. Last time, Lauren's mum thought she might have a broken head. <laughs> there were complications during Harley's birth. Lauren was in labour for 12 hours. She wanted a water birth last time. And she couldn't have it. Sort of a plus that she gets to at least experience it. Like 9% of mums, Lauren's determined to have her baby in a birthing pool this time round. She hopes the warm water may offer mild pain relief. You can still use the gas. OK, we can go to the cold room. You're six centimetres dilated. Yay! Well done. <laughs> not full. She's doing brilliant. Yeah, she does not need any help, so she can do herself everything mm. Well done. Keep breathing. Mm. The maternity unit has three suites with built-in birthing pools, which work alongside the beds. Everything is natural. They can experience a really lovely uh, labour and birth. A birthing pool has become available in another room. It's time for Lauren to leave maternity bed seven. It's a really natural experience and Basically, the baby from the inside is born in the water, so it's like he's still attached to mommy, but still in a familiar environment. Here, maternity bed 10 sits alongside the birthing pool. Before Lauren can get into the water, midwife Campatillo checks the baby's heart rate. Lauren's labour is progressing well. If it stays on track, she should be able to have her dream birth in water. Last year in UK hospitals, more than six million operations were carried out on patients who were discharged the same day. 
They visited specialised units like the Queen Elizabeth Hospital's day surgery, which has 81 beds. Our beds are always busy. You have to know what's going on. You have to make sure that the people that you are working with are aware of what you're doing because it affects everybody down the line. These hospital beds are under constant pressure to get patients through during a 12-hour shift. And can you tell me from the afternoon patients who's actually here? Uh, yeah, OK. Thank you. Cheers. Bye, bye. It's midday and day surgery bed 55 is waiting for its next patient. Next seat in there, of course. Um, right. What happened is one of my nursing colleagues in the bay will come over and talk to you and tell what's going to happen today. Just remind me again. 54-year-old Julie is having surgery to remove a cancerous growth that has returned on her leg. A few years ago, it just started off as a little tiny spot, and I just left it like that. And then about 12 months ago, it started bleeding, and Tim said to me, I think you better go and get that checked out. So I went to the doctor and got it checked out. And it's, the, it's a form of skin cancer, but it's not melanoma. Non-melanoma skin cancer is usually caused by overexposure to the sun. It's one of the most common types of cancer in the world. So I've had it removed twice, but um, when they looked at it under camera, they hadn't taken all of it because it was still on the outside. Husband Tim is by her side. They've been married for four years. Now she works in the chippy. <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and asked her out. <laughs> I think I was a bit taken back when they asked me out. <laughs> Comfy, Jules? Yes, thanks. Well done. They have five children between them. Julie's youngest, Tony Nicole, is also here today. Hello. My name is Maria Fanasiaru. I'm your surgeon today. Husband and that's my daughter. Surgeon Dr. Athanasiadu will perform Julie's operation. You're having something removed from your leg and we're going to probably use a skin graft. Would you like to just show me exactly where it is? Yeah. Julie waited for just two months for this surgery. Cancerous growths are removed as a priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After I've removed it. So I'm going to take a shave of skin from your thigh and then for about five to seven days we need to leave it undisturbed to see if the actual if the skin growth is actually taken as we call it, if it's worked. Yeah. Would it always be like that colour? There will be a difference in the colour. In the beginning it starts being quite red and then it becomes a bit more pale. Julie had the cancer cut out before, but the cancerous cells have returned. Despite having removed it fully, there is still a risk, about 3 to 5%. There is still cancer left behind and that we can only tell under the microscope. These are mainly the possible risks. So I'm just going to document everything here. Right, so as soon as you're ready, we'll probably wheel you in, OK? Oh, great. Thank you. The skin cancer is the size of a penny. To reduce the risk of the cancer returning, a bigger area of tissue will be removed. Yeah, it's going to be a bit better, isn't it? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's better off being like that than having to do it come back and have it all done again, isn't it? So. It's still a can, she said. Yeah. Yeah. Three to four percent chance of it coming back or something. Yeah, that's not much. That's nah, it's very low. Very, very low. Mm. Right, I'm just going to pop this side up so we don't lose you on the way. Okay. Okay. Okay, you, yep. you're taking that out of you. I am, yeah. Right. <laughs> Day surgery bed 55 carries Julie to the operating theatre. She should be reunited with her husband in under an hour. Cancer free. UK 
has 14 centres that specialise in children's medicine. In Newcastle is the Great North Children's Hospital. Here, nine beds work alongside a team of skilled paediatric staff. They deal with 30,000 emergencies a year. I need to find a bed on long stay for that patient. Paediatric bed 27 is standing by to receive a teenager. 13-year-old Geneva is extremely sick and dehydrated. She's being treated by Nurse Park. Have got any pain anywhere? When was the last time she was sick? About 10 minutes, 15, 10 minutes ago. More than 10 times now since 6 o'clock in the morning. And I'm quite worried. It's because obviously of the dehydration. Geneva's mum, Eva, is also a nurse. She's concerned that her daughter has lost too much fluid. I tried to give loads of fluids, but she, she cannot tolerate it. The more you give her, the much more that she's, um, it's coming out from her. So that's really the reason why I brought her over. And she's not tolerating any fluids? No. She, she, she can manage to drink, drink, but once she drinks a little, and it doubled up the vomit. So what I'll do is I'll get some water with some diolate in yeah. and we'll start a fluid challenge just to see how she goes yes, with 10 mils every five minutes or something like yeah. that. Okay. Thank you um, so I'll go Geneva there. is displaying symptoms of the highly contagious infection gastroenteritis. It affects one in five people in the UK every year. To prevent the spread of any infection, Geneva and Pediatric Bed 27 will stay in their own room, away from other vulnerable patients. I think this bed actually really comfortable. <laughs> if I wasn't sick, um, I would rather like have it flat and with a few pillows. But this is actually like better if you're sick because um, you get to like lie down, but you get to kind of sit up as well. Geneva is so dehydrated that her salt, glucose, and mineral levels have dropped. She needs small but regular doses of rehydration powder dissolved in water. So if you could do it every five minutes, and there's some diorite and some water, and just syringe 10 mils every five minutes, and see. Mm. We'll see how she goes, and if she didn't tolerate them, we'll think of something else. Okay. 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 I don't think you can make it tomorrow, no? Because you had this bad diarrhea and sickness. Should be at least 48 hours, she'll be free. What's happening tomorrow is I'm going back to school, but I don't think I'm, like, going to go to school because I'm quite sick right now. But, like, I was actually looking forward to it, to see my friends again. Pediatric Bed 27 We'll stay with Geneva until there's a change. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Consultant. Hi. Dr. Clark is the emergency consultant. Biba. Um, can I wake her up? Yeah, yeah. Biba. Biba. Geneva, the doctor is here now. Hello, Mrs. You all right? So my name's Ryan. I'm one of the children's emergency consultants. How are you? Please do. I understand you've not really had a uh, particularly pleasant morning. <laughs> and your dad had the same thing over the weekend, is that right? Not do you. And how's your pain in your tummy now? Because I understand you've had some tummy pain. Um, haven't really felt any pain since we got here because I like of the bed. <laughs> is it the bed? Is the bed helping you, is it? Yeah. Right. Can I have a little look at your tummy? Do you think it's yeah. that alright? So I'm just gonna start down here. You tell me if it hurts. Until Dr. Clark can establish the severity of Geneva's infection, she's confined to paediatric bed 27. At the neighbouring RVI in Newcastle, A&E bed 9 is transporting 47-year-old Andy to X-ray. He has intense pain in his hip 
after a kayaking accident. I don't, I don't think I've, I've, I think I've just, I've, I think it's just something that's badly ripped. I don't yeah. want bones in. It's a bit like if anybody's got man flu, and that Andrew's got man flu. His eyes are all bloodshot as well, aren't they? Then he has had a week away in Germany. German beer. Long days, long <laughs> nights. Oh, are you wheeling me to the pub? <laughs> this isn't the first time Andy's been to hospital with a sports injury. I broke a broken ligament in my late knee years ago. That was um, actually snapped a ligament. That was worse. That was worse. Andy needs to lie flat for the x ray of his pelvis. But even after painkillers, he's in severe pain. He's taken back to his wife, Alison. I just think Andrew exaggerates. <laughs> Sorry. The X-ray reveals Andy hasn't broken any bones or caused any serious lasting damage to his hip. Any consultant, Mr. Saharia, does a final examination. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I think all you've actually done is torn the muscle, probably at the insertion there. Right. Um, in terms of treatment, there's nothing specific. I do expect that this is going to be sore for some time. Right. Um, how we manage that pain is just mm -hmm. with the barrage of pain relief that we would normally give. So strong, regular painkillers. Mm -hmm. We can give you crutches for a period to see if that mm. helps you to mobilise. OK? Thank Fine, you. Nice to meet you. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going for that. I'm going for that. That is sore. That is sore. You, you touched me just there. Yeah, you know, you jumped off our bed. It looks very much like Andy's got a hip adductor strain. So when he's been in the kayak, he's had a sudden impact from a wave um, and he's had a sudden contraction to that area. And essentially, his muscles have torn. There are some muscles that are very easy to rest, but uh, the hip's not one of them. Similar to the back, you, you're kind of potentially using that muscle all the time. Yeah. It's 10.15 at night. Andy has now been on A&E bed nine for nearly two hours. He's still waiting for his crutches so he can leave with wife Alison. I'm bored. <laughs> I want to go home now. I'm just going to get your crutches and then they'll help you off the bed. Healthcare assistant Bell arrives. Mm. You're getting in and out of chairs, feel for the arms of the chairs, don't use these for getting up and in and out of chairs because it oh can right. just slip away from you. Right. When you're going up and down the stairs, go up and down on your backside, you've got to have a Are we all okay to go now, that is? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. Andy is discharged from A&E and instructed to rest. A&E bed nine is stripped down ready for its next patient. At Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital, day surgery bed 55 is taking Julie to the operating theatre. She's having a cancerous growth removed from her leg. So this is the theatre, OK? okay. So we're going to do the local anaesthetic first and then we'll leave it to walk a little bit while I get scrubbed and everything and then we'll drape everything. If you want to rest your head down, you need to give me the pillow? No, I'm fine. Yeah. Rest your hand as well, you haven't got AT. <laughs> Julie's skin cancer is a non-melanoma. The risk of it spreading is low if all the cancerous cells can be cut out. So you're going to feel a sharp scratch and then a bit of stinging, okay? Sharp scratch now. 
That's the stinging part, isn't it? Is that it? No, no, it's a bit more of a have to put it all the way around the egg. Because what you see, we obviously have to take a slightly bigger area. So we just need to make sure there's lots of anaesthetic. We're doing really well. If you feel any pain while we're operating, I'm just going to top it up a bit, okay? Fifteen. Fifteen years of Now, Mrs. Price, do you feel anything sharp here? No. No? That's a good sign. The cancer will be removed by Dr. Athanasiadu. taking this out and so we're going to focus on the skin graft now, yeah? Okay. I can't film that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> you didn't mean to. No, I didn't mean to. It's actually deeper than what I thought. Skin taken from Julie's thigh is used to repair the area. Wouldn't there always be that great big massive dent? Yes, it won't be as, as deep as it, as it looks now. It's much bigger than what I thought it was going to be. These are the last few stitches and then we'll just put quite a bulky dressing on it and then you need to rest at home. Will that be okay? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, this was much bigger than last time. It took away. Much bigger. But I didn't feel anything. But I didn't like looking at it. Even though I looked at it twice. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Day surgery bed 55 takes Julie back to the ward to be reunited with her husband Tim. <laughs> Queen's Hospital Maternity Unit, Romford. I'll do it. I'll, I'll do everything. 29-year-old right. yeah. Lauren is getting ready to give birth. Maternity bed 10 is by her side, but Lauren is hoping to use the room's birthing pool. Husband Robert and mum Jacqueline are with her. She dearly knew from the start of the first baby that she wanted the pool birth, the relaxing experience, and she didn't feel that she, she got that. Now. On maternity bed 10, midwife Campatillo checks the baby's heart rate. It's Lauren's second bed since admission. Okay. The first time I checked it was when we went in room 9. It was a good fetal heart rate and then um, uh, the second time I checked, um, I had the difference uh, between the heart rate I checked 15 minutes before. So it was like the baseline of the heart rate was dropping. So I did call my colleague just to confirm what I heard. What's wrong? What's wrong? Has the baby heart rate um, baseline dropped a bit? So we just need to keep an eye on that. Is it still in the normal limit? But we still um, need to keep an eye on my and just need to listen again in a little one, okay? Okay. You like the gas? Yeah. She loves the gas. <laughs> a low heart rate is an indication that the baby is in distress. The birth plan may need to change. 
we're gonna go down to Liverwood just to keep a um, close monitor on the baby, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, so Thank close. You. Sorry. Oh. Lawrence transferred to a third bed. It's maternity bed 18 in the consultant-led ward. Specialist doctors are on hand in case the birth becomes more complicated. It can be fetal distress, so we, we really need the close monitor on the baby and we need doctors, we need the machine for monitoring the baby and of course we need the, the baby doctor around as well. The heart rate of the baby is dropped, so um, I think it's close to being safe and sorry. So they've sort of abandoned the water birth at the minute to bring it down here to be closely monitored. So I think she's disappointed, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. They said not to rule out water birth, but. So if everything calms down, they would take her back up. Mm. But also in that time, she may deliver anyway. So. Mm. Senior midwife Quarty examines Lauren. Right, Lauren, just gonna have a quick look at your tongue. Okay. I haven't got a pain at the moment, have you? No. Okay. So what I'd like you to do really is turn on she's side for me. The baby may be at risk if it isn't born soon. To progress the birth, the team need to break Lauren's waters. I'm scared, it's all right. Everything's fine. Mm. You've got everybody here. I'm scared. Like this girl, just... just relax, relax. Mm. There's a lot more manic last time. Yeah, this is a lot more relaxing. Mm. Yeah, there was probably about three doctors in the room, a couple of midwives. I think just because Lauren wanted the experience, can't give birth every day. <laughs> You're coming. Okay. It might be over soon. You can rest. So I had to call the emergency buzzer for uh, extra hands and for helps from a senior midwife and from the doctor. Extra staff are needed to assist the delivery. Lauren's baby's heart rate has dropped to a dangerously low level. The next few minutes on maternity bed 18 are critical. At the children's emergency department in Newcastle, 13-year-old Geneva has been on paediatric bed 27 for an hour and a half. She's dehydrated after a serious bout of sickness and diarrhoea. Dr. Clark is the emergency consultant on duty. That's all over. So the good thing about your tummy, though, when I'm pressing, is that it's nice and soft. I think the fact that Dad had something very similar over the weekend is a big mm. clue that this probably is just a gastroenteritis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure that we can try and get things to settle down quickly mm -hmm. and uh, and try and get you away. Mm. Lovely. I'll pop and see you in a bit. 
Okay. Yeah, thank you. Well. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. We tend to usually see a lot more gastroenteritis in the winter months. Um, however, recently there has been a vaccine introduced that has reduced the amount of diarrhea and vomiting that we see. What I really want to do right now is just drink a whole bottle of water, but I can't. Mm. It's particularly important for Geneva to have a bed because, first of all, she's in discomfort, so we want her to be comfortable. But actually, more importantly, if she's got an infective gastroenteritis, we don't particularly want her in the waiting room uh, spreading that illness around to all the children who are here with injuries. Paediatric Bed 27 and Mum Eva have been in very close contact with Geneva since admission. Now Eva is showing signs of infection. Just go to the toilet, right? But if you need them, you feel sick or something, just press the, if you press that buzzer, huh? You need to go to the toilet, you know? Geneva's mum developing similar symptoms now isn't a, a great surprise. Um, if there is a gastroenteritis going around the house, uh, then it's no surprise that multiple family members are affected. The virus particles can live for several days. They can be transferred from surfaces and carried on clothing. How did you feel? <laughs> I'm not well there, but I know. I can manage. <laughs> Mommy's a nurse. <laughs> Typical mom. It's better that you feel this rather than the children. Moki, okay. I'm a typical hard-headed nurse. <laughs> Strong, independent woman. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling? Sorry. Have you been in, uh, sick anymore while you've been with us? No. Excellent. Have you had any more diarrhea? No. Okay. Have you managed to take any of that fluid that we were giving you? Yeah. 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 Well, it's well. just nearly finished. Oh, it's nearly all gone. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That is fantastic. So, mm. given everything, I think I'd be happy enough with you going home. Is okay. that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you all right? Me, no. <laughs> I feel I'm the one who kept, kept on going to the toilet now. Oh. I feel sick and the are years old. So. They're terrible, mm. these books. I know, God. Can you give me a smile? There we go. <laughs> so in the nicest possible way... After three hours, yeah. paediatric bed 27 has done its job. Okay, yeah. good stuff. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. It's given a thorough clean to get rid of any germs before the next patient arrives. Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Day surgery bed 55 and its patient Julie are back on the ward with husband Tim. Julie's had an operation to remove a cancerous growth on her leg. I tell you what, right, Nicole will be impressed with that. That is massive. Is it? They've taken out there, it's massive. So that is a crate that I've been. It's like as big as that, and as thick as that. This is the second time Julie's had this procedure. She's got to come back here next Monday to have a dress and change. She said, but even then, it's not going to look nice. Are you in pain at all with no. that? Is it <laughs> Just let me know, because it might wear off a little bit. OK. Just, um, what, what happens when she, she wants to pop in the shower and that? The... It will give you all the discharge oh, advice. Right. Like, okay. it tells you specifically what you can and what you can't do and stuff okay. like that. Is that okay, all right? Yeah, Brilliant. thank you. Yeah, cheers. Daughter Tony Nicole is also here. How much blood? Why do you ask? Because you know you don't like it. <laughs> So you need to keep the dressing clean and dry until for your appointment. I oh, can't shower for a week. Uh, no, you can do, but this the the one without the dressing. You can um, pull like a uh, plastic over it to wet the dressing. Oh, so I could put a bin bag over it. Yeah, put a bin bag over it. Yeah. Oh, right. What about but clean film? Can we clean clean yeah, clean film? Sometimes they okay, use it, yeah. but make sure not to not release the socket. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll get somebody to um, um, S escort you. Thank you. Julie will have to wait eight weeks for test results. If all of the cancer has been removed, she won't need any more surgery. Thank you. 
It's 1 p.m. at Queen's Hospital Maternity Unit. 29-year-old Lauren planned to give birth in a pool. But her baby's heart rate has dropped dangerously low, so she's been moved to a consultant-led ward. Lauren has been with maternity bed 18 for 30 minutes. It's her third bed during this birth. There's a team of five midwives and doctors. Maternity bed 18 will be here for as long as it takes. Welcome a new life is an amazing experience every time. I always say to the baby, I say, happy birthday, because it is, isn't it? The start of the life, so it should be happy. Lauren's new baby's heartbeat is normal. As you can hear for yourself, she's absolutely fine. Okay, it's okay. Well done. Another lovely little boy, it's fine. It's gorgeous. Looks exactly like his brother. He does look bigger than Charlie, though. His brother. <laughs> I think Aaron would have really liked to experience the water birth. Uh, it's not such a, a big deal because the baby was still born happy and healthy, but. Um, Maybe next time. Lauren will stay on maternity bed 18 until she's ready to move to a ward with her new baby boy, Brody. <laughs> Our hospital beds have given us intimate access to the work of the NHS. After a month of rest, Andy is almost 100% fit and back out in his kayak. Julie is still waiting for the all clear, following her skin cancer up, but her leg has healed well. And Lauren is grateful to all the staff at Queen's Hospital for the safe arrival of her second son, Brody. The beds are now back on their wards, ready and waiting for their next round of patients.